وذروا ظاهر الاثم وباطنه ان الذين يكسبون الاثم سيجزون بما كانوا يقترفون صدق الله العظيم الله سبحانه وتعالى Azik created a human being. He told us in detail in his book what things are good for human beings and what things are harmful for human beings. What things are beneficial and what things would cause destruction for human beings. The purpose of the revelation of Quran is basically to inform human beings of what is expected from them in this world and what are they supposed to do in this world. One of the very important orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran regarding spending our lives in this world is that we should always keep our heart pure and clean. Never allow anything to spoil this heart. Because once this heart is spoiled, that's the engine that's running this body. If the engine is not good in the car, and the car is full of options, is of no good and of no use, the car is a garbage. Because it does not drive. The engine does not work. Someone can keep on admiring the color of the car. Keep on admiring all the options that are in the car. It has a sunroof, it has power doors, power windows, it has alarm system, it has a remote start, it has all of these things. But what I'm going to do with a car that does not have an engine or it has a bad engine? Normally, we try to beautify our souls through our clothing, our look, and few things that we do with our physical body. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not just look at these things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at our heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would, would, would like to see so pure and clean heart. In Quran Kareem, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about people who would be receiving the gifts of Jannah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Akhirah, إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ A person who would come to Allah with clean heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be looking at the heart, at the situation of the heart. If the heart is pure and clean, the person is getting the gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When people go for graduation, we know that they try to dress special, put on a special dress. And then there are a lot of things, rules that they observe in order for them to go and get the prize. If a person wants to receive the prize from Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala and the greatest prize that a human being can ever receive and that is the prize of Jannah. Of course, then we have to get our souls ready for that and clean, pure, purify our souls and fulfill the conditions and the requirements to receive that gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Quran, the simple method of keeping it clean Refrain from all kinds of sins, whether they are physical sins or they are mental sins and spiritual sins. Which means, as we protect our hands from coming sins, we protect our eyes from coming sins, we protect our legs from coming sins, we protect our tongues from coming sins. We need to protect our heart and our mind from committing sins. It's not that you see a person who is very, mashallah, very stressed, very clean, physical, but in his heart, all this person is thinking about how can he hurt this person? How can he take away from something from this person? How can this person go and get the whole world just for himself? Then how can I just become the sole owner of the, everything that exists in the world? And every person would need me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made people with different natures. Some people, they get very pleased when they serve others. And there are some others, they are only pleased when they are served. They would want everyone to serve them. 
There are people who get very happy to see other people eating. And they enjoy seeing, mashallah. Very nice. I see these children eating. It's so nice to see them. And there are others who are hopping only when they get the food for themselves. They don't enjoy seeing anyone eating. There are people who enjoy seeing other people having the happiness in their life. And it pleases them to see other people happy. But there are others they would like to get every meal of happiness only for themselves. Not only this, if they see someone else who is being happy, it hurts them. They get jealous. How come he got it? How come he is so happy? How come he got this benefit? I did not get it. I need to get it for my soul. Once he went through a situation where normally any person would fail. It was a big test for him from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know that those people were very careful in using everything from Bayt and Bar. Ahmad Abdul Aziz is Khalifa. In fact, the person who is known to be the fifth Khalifa, the second Umar. Once he got some apples for Bayt al and the person who brought it, he said, I should be able to give it to the children. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, rahmatullahi alayhi, started giving out these apples to the children there, and his own son, young son, is playing around, and he sees other children eating apples. Where did you get it? Your father is distributing it inside there. Go get it from him. And he went, because his father is distributing it, so he picks up one of the apples, and he takes a bite. Right away, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz looked at him. He pulled the apple out of his hand. He took the apple out of his mouth. And he called another boy that was playing outside and says, Come, son, come and take it. It's for you. So this boy goes back home crying. Complains to his mother. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, rahmatullahi alayhi, when he went home. We all can understand what situation would be there where the son has complained to his mother that he was giving it to all the other boys. All of my friends got it. And when I went and I took it, he pulled it away from me and he gave it to another boy. So now he enters home and he gets into a situation. At that time, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made me in charge of this man of this world, of faith of man. And I feel that I'm the last deserving, I'm the least deserving person here. If I give it to my son, that on the day of Qiyamah, if someone else would come and complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, ask Umar bin Abdul Aziz, how come his son got it and my son did not get it? What would I tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What I would say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is he would ask me that, Oh Umar, how come there was another person still over there, he did not get it and your son was able to get it. Did he get it only because he was your son? Umar ibn Abdul Aziz then continues to say to his wife, When I pulled it out of his mouth, I felt like I'm pulling my heart out of my chest. I love my son too. But, I cannot sacrifice my Akhara because of an animal. And here we see how many times we sacrifice our Akhara because of my new things. This could be haram. But, let me just take it right now. This dollar is a haram. Whether it's a dollar or a hundred dollars, they are a haram. And at that time, it becomes a very difficult decision to say unto me that how can I need it? I'm getting it. I have my hand on it. How can I just let it go like that? This is only when a person would understand that looking at other people's benefits is the teaching of our being. 
رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وهم تسد الصحابه رضوان الله عليهم وسلم الدين ان تصيح because the deen is a mean of being a one wisher for others being a one wisher for others which means always looking forward to have every good for others if I have a choice between getting it for myself or someone else getting it give other person the wise for a deen of understanding this deen is a name of being a one wisher وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هونا وإذا خاطبهم الجاهلون قالوا سلاما والذين يبيتون لربهم سجدا وقياما والذين يقولون ربنا اصرف عنا عذاب جهنم إن عذابها كان غراما إنها ساءت مستقرا ومقاما والذين إذا أنفقوا لم يسرفوا ولم يقتروا وكان بين ذلك قواما والذين لا يدعون مع الله إلها آخر ولا يقتلون النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق ولا يزنون ومن يفعل ذلك يلقى أساما يضاعف له العذاب يوم القيامة ويخلد فيه مهانا إلا من تاب وآمن وعمل عملا صالحا فأولئك يبدل الله سيئاتهم حسنات وكان الله غفورا رحيما صرف الله العظيم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم when he was asked about his mission of coming to this world his response was that I have been sent to connect people to their Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala people who are broken off their Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala and because of that they lost their status as human beings I have been sent to connect these people back to their Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala when we look at the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or in simple words we may say the teachings of the deen of Islam we will realize that Islam made this connection so easy that there is no way any human being can say that I cannot connect myself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is no way that I can do it. It's impossible for me. People came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with those type of thoughts. That, no ya Rasulullah, I don't think I can make it. And before that person left the gathering of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was convinced that this deen is for him and his Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala is always welcoming him no matter what he has done in his past Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only is willing is looking forward to forgive him a person came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said Ya Rasulullah I'm ready to become Muslim but I have done such horrible things in my past that I don't think there is any forgiveness for it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, how could you say that? He said, Ya Rasulullah, let me just tell you one of the things I have done. 
I had a beautiful daughter. Before my wife gave birth to the child, when she was pregnant, I had not to be home. I came back about seven years later. When I came back, I asked my wife, what happened to that pregnancy? What did she deliver? And she told me that she delivered a child that had done it. Our neighbors had a young girl, and she used to come and visit us very often. She would be at our home many times. Uh, I used to make her sit with us and eat also with us. And I really loved that girl. One day I said to my wife, how nice it would have been if we had a girl like this one. That day she opened up and she asked me, she said, would you really love to have a daughter? She said, after seeing this one here, I would really love to have a daughter. You know, in the days of Galilee, they used to consider it to be an insult for a person to have a girl, to have a daughter. And still, in many traditions, in many people's minds, may, although we may not speak it out, that thought comes up sometimes that, okay, I wish you had a boy. Upon the birth of a girl, many times we hear this guy, I wish you get a boy. Yes, having the mix of both is good and everyone would love to have it, but it is a name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a great rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as far as the world is concerned, let me tell you this. As far as the world is concerned, there is no comparison between raising a boy and a girl. The reward of raising a girl is much greater than the reward of raising a boy. People don't realize this. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, a person who raises three daughters, or someone who, whose father died and they became orphans, and he raised his sisters, if a person would raise three girls, sisters or daughters, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if he has fulfilled their rights, his responsibility towards them, and he taught them what they were supposed to learn, and then he fulfilled his right, lost responsibility of marrying them to the right person, the hadith thing, he will be in Jannah with me just like he put two fingers together, that just like these two fingers are together, he will be with, in Jannah with me like this. <coughs> but that was a tradition, that if someone would have a baby girl, they would like to not only that it's an insult, they would just get rid of her, or have but then would kill her. So when she was convinced that he really loves daughters now, she told him one day that this girl that you see in the neighbor's home, this is our daughter. After delivering this girl, I thought once you come back you're going to kill her, so therefore I handed her over to our neighbors for, her, for them to take care of her. Since for them this was not their daughter, so they don't want mind, they won't mind keeping her in, her in their home. But people would not keep their own daughters in their home. So when I told him this, he said, oh yes, I, mean, I would love to have in our home, let's take her back. And he says, we took our daughter back to our home. Then the same Jahiriya came up in his mind. And one day, he takes his daughter out. No one knows where he's going. And he's being a home. He says, Ya Rasulullah, as I was digging, the dirt was getting on my clothes and she was cleaning my clothes for me and she's saying, Dad, what are you doing? Your clothes are getting dirty. 
and she kept on cleaning my clothes. Until I dig, I got a deep enough hole that I can bury a person in it, I threw her in it. And then I started throwing the dirt over her. And she was crying. Dad, please don't do this. You don't have to keep me with you. Just hand me over back to those people. Let me live somewhere else. I won't be burdened on you. She kept on crying and begging me. But I didn't want to have a daughter in this world. Until I burned her alive. And she was crying and shouting. <laughs> now, after this man, he realized what type of sin that was. And he feels that there is no forgiveness for it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was so shocked, so upset. As he's hearing and he's crying and he says to him, okay, repeat this once again to me. Tell me once again. How could you do something like this? Now, he's in a position where he knows the ayah, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَخْفِرُ أَنْ يَشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَخْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ مِنَ الْمَشَاءِ Allah will not forgive shirk besides shirk in the Akhirah, he will forgive anything, whatever he likes to forgive, he will forgive. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wants to tell him that, but there is some hesitation. You know, how could you do something like that? And therefore, he is not telling him these words. He doesn't want to tell him at this time. He knows this is the ruling, but he cannot. He cannot utter these words at this time after hearing that from him. That this is what you have done. Well, she was crying, she is begging you, she's your girl, she's your daughter, and you would do something like this. You don't do something like this to anyone. <coughs> and finally, Nabi alayhi salatu was salam came with the same ayah, repeating the ayah that Ya Rasulullah recited this ayah to him. Let him know whatever he did in the days of Jahiliya, that's done, and now, after Iman, these things are forgiven, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the doors of the Rahman and forgiveness are still open for him. Which shows that this door of forgiveness is always open. Of course, as we see that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not saying that then. Because of the type of sin this person has committed, and what do you think could be worse than this? And just think of any sin a human being can commit in his life. What can be worse than something like this? Seven years old girl, beautiful girl. You know, if you see, when we know girls, they are the beautiful, most beautiful thing in the world. And a person would do something like this to her? Out of the Sahabi King, in other occasion, he says, Ya Rasulullah. For me, I don't think there is forgiveness at all. Why? What did you do? He says, Ya Rasulullah, when I asked him, that is in the days of Jahiliya. I committed zina. And then, when the girl had a, she became pregnant, and when she had a child, I killed the child. A great blessing which is the month of Ramadan, the month of Rahmah, the month of forgiveness, the month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers His blessings and opens the doors of His forgiveness. It is truly the month as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Shahrullah. It is the month of Allah. Especially for people like us who hardly get an opportunity during the rest of the year to obtain the closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to devote our time and sacrifice our energy and time for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Month of Ramadan really becomes an opportunity for us that we can really think of what we have been doing with our souls. 
What are we doing with this connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with our Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala? This connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the most important achievement for human beings in this world. It's something that hardly people think about it. Whereas all the Anbiya alayhim as wassalam, as they came to the world, their main teaching was for people to connect themselves to their Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala to realize who their Rabb is, who their Creator is, who their Rizaq is, who is providing them with all of these blessings. I think I mentioned this once before. That a person once asked me that I got involved, he thinks that I got involved in some of the haram things. And now as I think about it, I would like to come out of it, but I don't find a way for myself to come out of it. Because that's my source of income now. If I give it up, I won't be able to provide my family with anything. And that's my responsibility. I cannot take that burden that I have no income at all. And my whole income at this time is only haram. Now he says to me, you tell me what should I do in this situation. And truly speaking, I was puzzled. I didn't know what to tell this person. Because if I tell him, just give it up right away, right away the question comes into my mind, what is he going to do now tomorrow with his family situation? He has a wife, he has children. He has to feed them. But if I tell him, tell him continue with it, then I'm allowing him to do haram. So he saw me being so puzzled, right away he says to me, he says, I asked our teacher, and me and him had a common teacher. We studied in the same place. He said to me that I asked the same question to our teacher. Then he says, guess what his answer was. And then he continues saying that he told me that, listen, you are saying that you are not able to give it up because you have to provide your family because you are responsible, because it's your responsibility, you have family, you have children. So he said to me, imagine tomorrow you are walking out of your house and by accident you slip and break your back. What are you going to do? Just as I said to him, I'll end up being in the hospital. Okay? Now your back is broken, you cannot get up for some months. And after that, doctors will tell you that you can never work anymore. What are you going to do? So he said, I said to him, okay, I got the answer. This is how simple it is. Many times we consider ourselves to be everything. And I have to keep on doing this haram because I'm this. That is because we forget our connection with our Rasul Khalifa wa what is me? He is the provider. He is a Razzat subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is everything for us. He created us. He is sustaining us. He is blessing us with all of his na'mas, blessings, day and night. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us in the Quran. That if you would take our eyesight away, who can give us this power of seeing? If you would take our hearing away from us, and how long would that take? It's a matter of seconds. If he would take the hearing away from the person, who would give this person the power of hearing? If he would take away the power of his speech, how could this person speak anymore? All of these are nirmas from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we are using the very same ni'mah that we are getting from him 
we are using it to disobey. And then we are presenting the very same nirama, the very same blessing as an excuse to him that I have to keep on doing these haram, these wrong things, because I have to use these things, these parts of my body. Subhanallah, if he takes it away, God forbid, may Allah forgive us. But, if he takes it away, what can the person do after that? Can he still continue doing all of these haram that he's doing at this time? No. <coughs> that will be the end of it. Now you will see this person praying to Allah, repenting to Allah, and realizing that, oh Allah, you know, you gave it to me for so many years and I didn't realize it. Why don't we realize it at this time when we have it? Rather than realizing it after losing it. It's always the best to realize the greatness of these nirmas and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while you're receiving it. Because, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you be grateful, I'll give you more. It's not that I'll take them away from you. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam. What a great prophet of Allah. Khalilullah. The one who has the title of being Khalilullah, the son of Allah. For more than 80 years of his life, he did not have a child. For sure he was praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he did not have a child for more than 80 years of his life. Now when he gets a child, فَلَمَّا بَلَغَهُ مَعَهُ الْتَعِمُ And the child grows up is not that he is only a few days old. No, as the child is growing up and the attachment is increasing and the father now is getting used to having his son with him at all times. And now the boy runs around and he is going everywhere with his father. فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَعَهُ السَّعِيَ He is able to walk with his father and go everywhere with his father. It's showing the connection that has been established between the father and son now. All of a sudden, he gets the order that slaughter your son. For my sake. Ya Allah, 80 years I've been making dua to get a son. And after that, when you give me a son, and at, once he grew up, and he, I did so much for him, I, I mean, we know what we do for our children, and especially when it's the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, he did everything to make sure that he provides the right atmosphere and everything for his son as he grows up and he's, he's walking with his father the order comes that you have to slaughter your son but of course Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam after all he is really Khalilullah the friend of Allah this is what you want to Allah okay it's for you and he takes his son to sacrifice him for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What was the ending result of it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not take his son from him. In fact, he blessed him with another son. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not take. He gets. He is a giver. He is not a teacher. He doesn't need anything from us. When he takes, he is destroying it. He's testing us. He tested Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam tested us. Yes, ya Allah. For your sake, I'll do anything. Ibrahim, I don't want it. I'll give you one more. With all the other attachments that we have in our lives, of haram attachments, we feel that it's difficult for me to give it up. Yes. I know for sure it is difficult. But we have to realize one thing, that we are not giving it up for anyone else. We are going to be giving it up for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once we keep that in mind, then everything becomes easy. That's how all things is hard to give it up, but now when the comparison would come, I'm giving it up for the sake of Allah. What if you would like, if you would just take it away from me tomorrow? Is he going to question me, ask me, that you would you like to give it up? 
What if he would just take me out of this world tomorrow? Does he have to ask me? He doesn't need no permission. He's not going to ask. People just go like that. Things just go away like that. We earn thousands. And then we end up spending those thousands. Whatever we earn, we end up spending it. Things are getting expensive. What does that mean? The person is earning more, he is spending more. We don't love to spend. We love to earn. We love to keep it for ourselves. But no, we have to spend. What is hard? That is telling us that everything is out of our control. Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who controls everything. لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ Be grateful, I'll give you more. وَلَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ And if you be ungrateful, you misuse my blessing. إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدِ Then remember, if my punishment would come, my punishment is very severe, you won't be able to handle it. Once that عَذَاب would come, it will be too difficult of a situation for you to handle. Then people will start having heart attack. Then they will have problems in their family. Then they start losing their business. Then they start losing their ability. Then they start losing their wealth. Everything is starts going away. Their relatives, their family members, their friends, everyone turns their face away from them. Inna adabi la My punishment is very severe. You cannot handle it. 